This is Roger Struckoff with Syscon TV from Cloud Expo East in New York in 2016, day two, and we're talking to Mahesh Ramu from Plasma. Now, we had a conversation with your company, I don't know, not that long ago, uh, about something called Connect to Me, but I think it's changed. Today we're talking about C2M. So, what are we talking about and why? So, um, we are talking about C2M, our uh, digital transformation and IoT platform. And uh, you know uh, we are uh, uh, we have C2M on the market for almost about three years now, mm -hmm. and it's a fantastic IoT platform that has uh, a wide, uh, 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 I should say, a comprehensive set of functionalities that it brings to the market, uh, which makes it very distinctive. And as you you know sort of migrating or abbreviating the name, you know what are the main strengths that are coming through? The IoT has changed, I think, or progressed in the last couple of years. So, how are things really evolving for you, and 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 what are you doing about it? Yes, uh, so we are seeing that uh, you know the prices of uh, some of these dev IoT devices and sensors are falling quite rapidly, and that is actually propelling a lot of uh, interest in this area from companies that can now afford technology technologies that were previously they were not able to afford and uh, with that we are seeing a, a, a big increase in demand for IOT platforms and things that can be automated uh, there is a big return on investment in this area because you know you are able to actually know what people are doing uh, machines are able to do it so that's a very attractive proposition to most companies you know Things that can be automated. So what sort of things are being automated in, in your world? So uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we are working with a very advanced city in California. So one of the problems they have is that uh, they, are, they are located on the ocean side. So the seawater is actually, uh, sometimes it is pushing sewage back into the city, which is contaminating groundwater. Now what do they do about it? it this has been happening for some time. So what they do is they open the manhole, they look into it, and then they know, okay, this, this is happening. So they turn on the pumps so that the sewage flows in the right direction. Now, what uh, we are able to do is automate this. So we have probes that grow that go into these manholes, uh, and then that measures the electrical conductivity of water. So it knows how much of salt is there in the water. So it knows if the sea is going in the wrong direction or if the sewage is going in the right direction. And then we automatically can turn on pumps that actually does this. So you don't have to keep opening the manholes to see this, for example. So. And, and they're catching the problem right away, too. I mean, that's, that's the thing. What other examples are there? I mean, is this all sort of like, that's sort of an industrial application, I guess you would say. What, you know, is it going on beyond? I mean, what are you doing um, outside of that, or is it all within this sort of industrial application? Yeah, our main focus is enterprise application, which is uh, enterprise applications, which is mostly on the industrial uh, focus actually. But uh, we are also able to work uh, on consumer applications as well. So uh, we have, uh, you know, our platform is open; it is customizable based on the needs of the customer. So uh, other examples of uh, industrial implications, for example, for smart cities. If you look at smart cities, is um, there is a city in uh, uh, the state of New Jersey uh, that was having a, an issue with uh, with the granularity of the rainfall. Uh, for example, uh, if if there is uh, if there is rainfall, they wanted to measure rainfall at different parts of the city as opposed to just having two metrics for the entire city. Rainfall of three inches. It's not just three inches across the city. It is 2.5 to 3.5 maybe. You know, but now. To get this granularity, they have to have sensors in various different points of the city. Now, we are able to get the data from all of these sensors that have been deployed across the city and then show them in a single pane of glass on how the rainfall is you know, distributed across the city. So you can actually, the emergency response can focus on areas that are low-lying and which has a higher than uh, a threshold of uh, rainfall that is, you know, um, uh, that is happening there. So there's an application that could be used by any city, and even the one in Los Angeles could be could be used by a lot of cities. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and we have uh, use cases that uh, that work across various uh, industries. So we have things happening in energy, we have uh, things happening in the oil fields, and we have you know cities, of course, like we mentioned, manufacturing. We have uh, a, a bunch of uh, use cases. Uh, one more interesting use case is we are working with uh, one of the world's largest uh, healthcare device manufacturer. 
and uh, what uh, uh, what they're trying to do is they have these ECG machines that uh, you know in the developing world uh, these ECG machines have been sold across you know across the planet of course they have sold it to various different uh, you know companies and you know individuals so uh, imagine you are in a rural area in a developing country right there is probably a healthcare provider maybe a doctor in a village uh, he is able to measure the ECG of a patient, but then he's not a cardiologist, so he does not know how to interpret that data accurately, as accurately as a cardiologist would. So what we are helping this organ, uh, this company, the healthcare company, is that you know we are able to make that uh, ECG device connected to a team of cardiologists who are actually looking at a bunch of monitors and they say, okay, this guy needs to go to the hospital right away. This guy needs an injection. This guy needs this kind of a medicine. So they are, uh, so now we are bringing the cardiologist to a very remote location, which was never being serviced by such people. So this is, uh, this is making the healthcare uh, uh, accessible by really remote areas. Yeah, so it's a huge idea that, that can be applied um, in, in a lot of places with, with the technology and, and, and um, will to, to do it. And you're also saving lives along the way. So, again, you think that the lowered cost of some of the devices and technology is, is, is enabling this and, and well, that's going to continue? Yes, absolutely. In fact, for this last uh, uh, you know, healthcare uh, use case that I mentioned, uh, the cost of implementation was a really primary, um, uh, you know, uh, hurdle that had to be crossed. So when you are selling uh, these kinds of services to really remote areas and you know developing world, I mean, you you cannot say, oh, it's just a couple of dollars. It's, they cannot afford this. Right. So the cost of the device, the cost of the service, all of these are very critical factors. And and we see a very good trend in the sense that with the advent uh, advent of technology, I mean, all of these prices are falling, which is making all of these things a lot more accessible. Yeah, I lived in the developing world for several years, so I, I agree with you 100%. How do people find you online? What's your URL? Oh, it is uh, c2m.net. It is the letter C, the number 2, uh, the letter M.net. C2M.net, doing great works across the world. Dropping prices of some of the technology helps a lot. Still have to know what you're doing. These guys do. Thanks a lot for coming and seeing us. And thanks for watching. For Syscon TV, this is Roger Strokoff.